What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're over here at Brian's shop, BK Performer Kill Dozer. That don't look the same. It does not look like it did last time you saw it. Let me show you what he's done. Go to turbojohnracing.com, grab some hats and t-shirts, comment, like, and subscribe. All right, so JW's over here, Brian's over here. Brian, what do you have happening over here? I put a little motor in. I took that, that big SLS out and put a little motor in. That's a little four cylinder, a little four, four banger times, thing. times two. Times two. That thing has now got more cubic inches. It has got almost double the cubic inches of my old motor. So, so he would put his uh, LS motor for sale. We've been talking big block for a while now. So Brian is making it happen. He made it happen. He found somebody that wanted to go LS. This is an X nitrous motor, um, 632 cubic inches. Uh, bow tie block, good crank, good rods, good piston. What kind of heads did you say they were again? It's a uh, Fulton BB2s. BB2s, that's a Brodix head. And this thing fits in here like gangbusters. It really fits real nice. Uh, so he's just getting everything done. So you can see one of the big things is the motor placement. Uh, you know, our car is the motor is way far forward. So when you build a race car, this is what you want. The harmonic balancer about at the spindle and back. Uh, so he's trying to decide turbos. You still leaning truck right now to a 118? Well, I have the 118, but if anybody wants to trade me 285, 88s, I'd be game for that. Too. For Gen 1 118. I mean, there's got plenty of room to do the 118, but man, a turbo back there and a turbo back there. Yeah, that'd, oh. be, that'd be cool. And that would be, that would help with the weight. I mean, you wouldn't have 70, 60, 70 pounds hanging directly off the nose. Which, if y'all remember, Killdozer has this problem with doing wheelies at the finish line. So, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things, a little bit of extra weight on it probably ain't a bad thing. That's really the main reason. You know, I, don't, I can take 160 pounds off the front now. Right. So this thing should it'll probably be firing the hole soon. Uh, he's got to do intake, get the rails mounted, so it can be. It is going to be fuel injection, of course. It's going to be Holly EFI. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Have you decided what you're going to do with your fuel pump yet? Are you going to make it? You going? Can you do cam drive again? Big box Chevrolet. The uh, the cam drive cover is only 115 dollars. Oh, and okay. The, the spud and extending is only like 200. So okay. Yeah. So. The pump will just go. It's just gonna go back, just, back like, in there. just like the LS. Awesome. I mean, very quickly. Well, very I quickly. I gotta save up money for them headers. Woo. Uh, yeah. You gonna try to do a custom? You gonna build, build your own set? eBay for the win. eBay. eBay. Let's go, baby. Let's go. JW has got parts and pieces too. New pistons. He went and picked him up a block. Now he's already got the intake. So uh, this is big block too. You excited? Oh, very. They ain't no. Very. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the only small block left. Yeah. I'm the only small block left. Well, Randy's got a small block, but his is like a big block. All right, guys, so I got all my parts and pieces back here and putting the plugs back in the motor. So one of the things, you wanna make sure all these go in the right place. The way this one is designed, the restrictors go in the front. My old Iron Eagle block was different. They were in the back back here. All right, guys, well, we have made a little bit of progress here. Uh, got all of our freeze plugs in. This block, this is the restrictor here in the front. Um, the cam tunnel. This block is weird the way it feeds. This is the out that goes out to the uh, oil filter. This is the in that comes in and then it goes over to here up and then it goes into this cam tunnel here somehow. It's angled up somewhere and then it feeds oil through here. This is the priority main. The priority main it goes down to the mains then this oil comes through here and then it pressurizes here. And then this is where the restrictors are. And that's what restricts the top of the motor. So uh, everything's good. It's got a cam plug in the back. Uh, all these are in the back here. Now y'all remember we had an oil in problem. Uh, we thought the oil was getting stuck up here. So we put that vent line. I was thinking about uh, trying to drill. Uh, most of your blocks have uh, you know, air gaps in here. But this one does not. I was thinking about trying to come in here and drill. And I'm sure Kevin could have done it for me and missed all the galleys. But I just decided I didn't want to do that. So uh, we got it fixed for the most part uh, for the oil one. So I think we're good to go. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to dingleberry this thing. Uh, hone it. Uh, could have got Kevin to do that. But the motors haven't been together long. So I'm going to just bury hone it. And uh, we'll put it the same way together. And you look at the surface. And you can see the you can see the receiver grooves how these things are cut in there I'm trying to get my camera to focus so this is freaking phenomenal these top fuel hoops 
I'm very excited to get these things bolted on there uh, and hopefully we'll have a, a very good engine. All right guys, so we got this thing very honed up. Not the best way. I know TKM could have done a real nice hone job on it for us, but you know, with a matter of time, and we usually just bury hone it anyway. So we bury honed it like we normally do. Now something TKM did have to do, when we knocked the thrust out of this thing, uh, they ended up having to um, line hone this thing. And so, and you can see the crankshaft was actually rubbing right here. It had so much thrust. So Kevin got this thing, uh, his team, uh, they measured it all up. You have to cut the caps. Uh, generally, when you cut the caps like this one, it's not that big a deal because it's just flat, right? So you mill the caps down and then you line on it. But look at the cap on this, it's stepped. Uh, the one on the front is the same way. So it is stepped, so there's a little bit more process and a little bit more time to cut these caps. You cut them, you bolt it all back down, and then once you do that, then you line on it. Now, one thing that is very interesting, you guys need to always pay attention to this if you have a small block Chevrolet. When you line hone, this right here is where the rear main seal sits. You need a Felpro part number 2909 rear main seal. If you do not get a rear main seal with that part number, it will leak. And the reason why is because the rear main seal here is now the same size as the bearings. And you can see it clear as day right here. Uh, and that's, that's fine, that's okay. They make a special seal for it. So FYI, if you ever have to line bore or line hone, uh, 400 block, then that's what you got to get. Part number Felpro 2909. So this up here is the roller thrust. And if you watch the other video uh, that I posted about the roller thrust describing what it is, this is it. So this is it in the block. The block is machined, the cap is machined, and we're going to set this crank in right now. So we got uh, Clevite uh, hardened bearings. So we're going to go ahead and this is uh, where I was telling y'all earlier where the oil was coming through. This is the main feed. So we're going to take the caps off of it real quick, uh, put the bearings in it, drop, uh, drop the crankshaft down in there with the thrust bearing. And he's already set the clearances, so all I got to do is put it together. Sure, buddy. Okay, some of these caps are really hard to get off, and the reason why is they are dowled. Uh, the front one's not too bad, but these middle ones, these are solid dowels where well, they're not solid. They got holes in them, but they're dowled, so it was a little challenging to get those off. You can see where they honed this, line honed it, like I was telling you. And you can see back there uh, where this thing uh, comes comes in and out of the machine. Uh, so one of the other things that is interesting, and th this is true for the head studs and the main studs. If you look at this this bolt, this is a 7 16 It's fine thread on the left side here. And on the right side, you see how long the thread is. And it's got this piece on the, the end here. And they actually machine the block and the head studs to where you have to have a specific stud. And it's a coarse thread. Just screw these things in, just finger tight. You don't ever want to wrench on them and like torque them down, torque them down, torque them down. So uh, just do them uh, finger tight and then they are set. So that's all you need to do there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the bearings in the block, put the rear main seal in. Small block Chevrolet, don't forget, you got to put the rear main seal in. Once you get the remaining seal in, you kind of cock it sideways a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. And then you set the crank down in there. All right, guys, here's the part number for that seal. This is it. It's also got some really good instructions on the back here on how to do this. Uh, so read those instructions, but it's pretty simple. This is the seal. If you're looking at it from this way, you see toward me, there's a bigger lip versus the smaller lip uh, toward away from me. So the bigger lip, the bigger side, always faces the crankshaft side. It always faces the crankshaft side. Um, so you put it in there, pop it down in there. And what I was saying about offsetting, it's hard to do with one hand, but basically all you do, well, so about right there. So this is the proper orientation for the rear main seal of almost every engine, but especially this uh, small block Chevrolet. So it goes there, basically on the cap, you will just do it the opposite way. And then when you set the crankshaft down in there, of course you wanna apply some grease or some oil 
we're gonna put some Lucas. Uh, I just, I enjoy using the Lucas oil stabilizer for my bearing, uh, for my lubricant, cause it really, it sticks really well and it stays. So we'll put a little bit of this, we'll go ahead and put the bearings in it real quick, and then we will set the crank down in there. All right, guys, well, this is the roller thrust bearing in action. So it was real simple. It went right on, uh, of course, and it is captive. And he said it's got about two thousandths of in play. And you can see there really good how he machined the snout or the bob weight here of the uh, actual crankshaft. And then he machined the block. And you can see I can move this. So it's got, it's got play. And then when it starts pushing, I imagine what will happen is these races here will kind of lock down on the surfaces and then the roller bearing right there in the middle will be the thing taking the load. Back here in the back, it's gonna ride on this thrust, which is the one that keeps the crankshaft from going backwards, which there's nothing pushing on that, nothing at all. And then back here in the back, you can see there's a nice wide gap there, and that is because the crankshaft is wore out. So uh, if we were gonna repair this properly, we would weld this up and send it to the crank man and uh, have this one being supported by this one up here. But since we're kinda in a hurry and this is a race application only, we think this will be fine. Cause we have known several people to do it just like this and uh, just completely cut that actual thrust bearing off completely back here in the back. So now um, all we gotta do is put the caps on it and then we will have a uh, crankshaft in a block. We do not have a short block. It's taking me a little time, hasn't it? It always does. I'm just a little slow, a little slow. Uh, here we go. All right, guys, so we got these run down. Uh, the outside ones are not tightened all the way. The inside ones are just barely uh, zipped down ugga duggas, like one ugga dugga on the impact, and the crank is still spinning fine. Uh, now, we do have the thick uh, oil on it, so the Lucas Assembly Lube is what we used. So you're not gonna, it's not gonna spin like butter because it's not oil. So, uh, when you have oil on it, then it does it better. And it makes it smoother. So this uh, lined up pretty good. So now we're gonna go through and torque these. Uh, I always start in the middle and just kind of work my way out. But I wanted all the middle ones. I just looked up the torque specs because I couldn't remember. 75 uh, pounds on these. Uh, the outer ones on the splayed are 65 and these little teeny ones are 30. So we'll go through and torque these up real fast. Easy peasy. Oh, something I didn't think about a minute ago to tell y'all. Um, they've got the caps numbered. Um, number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five is obvious. Uh, the arrow points forward. Uh, they're always tang to tang on a small block Chevrolet. LSs are different. They are not tang to tang. I learned something new uh, last time. Uh, I think Brian had his part. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things you just got to be careful. One other thing that Kevin did when they were uh, setting clearance on this, they numbered the bearings. So number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And if y'all noticed in the, uh, before I put the crank in, you always put the shell in the, it's called the upper bearing. The motor's turned upside down. So it's the lower, lower bearing when it's upside down, but when the motor is in the correct position, it's actually the upper bearing. That's where oil comes through. It's got a hole and a slot. Make sure you put that in correctly. If you put it Crank is installed. 
Although I run into another problem. Uh, they took the front bearing out because to put it in the, the jig, um, I assume that's where the uh, thing goes. And usually those things are pretty easy to put in, but it was a little tight fit. I froze it and started putting it in, and yeah, it locked it up. So I guess I bottomed it out too much. So I got to get another can bearing. Uh, other than that, though, the crank spins butter smooth. Loving it. So we got uh, our little bit of silicone back here. Uh, it is, man, this is nice. And, you know, this is a scat crankshaft, but it is one of the nicer, older forgings. A big block Chevrolet snout. Um, you know, the scat material stuff. I mean, they are actually reasonably good crank. It ain't a Bryant. It's not a, you know, super, super, super high end. But uh, I like it. All right, guys, well, we're back at it. Night number two. So last night we got the crank installed. So ordered some parts and pieces, ordered me a puller to pull this bearing out, ordered me a new bearing. We'll have to come up with a new way <laughs> to get that in. Might end up having to, to heat the block here with the torch and get this cold. I think I just went a little too far in is what happened though. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, so that one got destroyed. So, We'll get that repaired and replaced. Uh, hopefully, not gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, got me a handy dandy uh, crankshaft turner. I usually use uh, vice grips or either a big pair of channel locks, but this will make it a little easier. Got that off of Amazon. I uh, went ahead and cleaned the journals. Uh, journals look nice and good. I did also just go over all the torque specs again. Nothing has changed, everything is good. 75 foot pounds, 65 foot pounds, and these little ones are 30. So we're good there. So now, um, the way I like to assemble the rods, I'll do them one, one at a time. They're down here. We got new bearings. Uh, we'll clean them up, put new bearings in it. These things are super easy to do. Uh, they have a dowel on one side. So you got an upper and a lower. And most of these bearings I'm gonna actually keep for spares. Um, and it's just one of those things we'll throw them in the trailer. If we ever mess something up at the track, then then we'll put it back together. Uh, I do need to find my torque specs on these. Uh, a lot of people use a rod stretch. I don't have that tool and I think we need to torque these to 90 if I remember correctly. And we just use regular old uh, 50 weight motor oil when we're doing this. So what I'll do now, real simple, I'll spin the motor over and I'll do one whole bank at a time. And that way it's just easier. I don't have to go back and forth. Some people will, will they'll go back and forth, flip the motor side to side. But I like to have just one bank get the, the deck surface so it's kind of level and makes it easier to, to get these things down in the hole. Now this makes it a ton easier too. Now these pistons are 4.165, but you lubricate this up real good. This one is a 4.160. They actually fit perfect in this one. Now I don't know if you're supposed to get one uh, 5,000 smaller, but this is one that was here at Brian's shop and it works perfect. I tried it last time. So uh, lube it up real good with a WD-40. Uh, spray the rings uh, real good with WD-40. Uh, the cylinders, spray those good with WD-40. And then you just take the butt of a hammer, make sure it's rubber or wood, and then you just start smacking it. And the way I do it, do it kinda, kinda fast, cause you want the rings to pop in there. If the rings pop out, then of course you want to stop. If you, you should never have to really bang on it real hard. If you do, then you need to stop, pull the piston back out. Most likely an oil ring has come out or a top ring or a second ring. Uh, if you continue to bang it, uh, you'll end up with a broke uh, ring, which is no good. All right, guys, so we almost have a completed short block here. I got one more piston to put in. I don't know if you noticed. I got this one almost in, and then I stopped. And the reason I stopped was because when I was pushing it down in the uh, ring compressor here, I started noticing that it was under a little bit of extra tension. And then when I tried to slide it in there, one side was not going up. The oil ring, uh, you got three pieces on the oil ring. I'll show you in a second. But basically, if it comes apart and you don't catch it, then it could be a problem. 
Now, one of the things I also do is when the piston is in the hole here, I rock the piston back and forth. You're going to have a little bit of piston rock. And I don't know if you can really even see it on camera. But you got just a little bit of piston rock side to side, back and forth. That's another way you can tell if one of the rings is stuck. That's not going to tell you if you broke a ring, but it'll tell you if it's stuck anyway. Let me show you on this piston real fast. All right, guys, so here is the three-piece O-ring, so something to pay attention to. Uh, there is a butt joint somewhere. Hold on. All right, guys, so here it is. There is the butt joint right there. So what happens is these rings have little rises on the inside all the way deep down in there. And the actual rings, the one on the top and the bottom, is what holds the spacer ring uh, in the right spot. And it holds it all together one piece, right? So if that piece comes over, they overlap. And then when they overlap, it keeps it from, from actually uh, compressing. And the easiest way to see it, you can do it like that. You can find it. But as long as you can move this in all directions, as long as this ring, this oil ring is movable, then you're good to go. So this is the last one I'm putting in. This is the one that uh, was leaking real bad. So we're fixing to clean it all up real good. We're there again, we're running the MGP rods. Looking at the bearings, um, you know, we put this thing together here last time and that one's got a little bit of trash in it, probably from where we were uh, killing the thrust. But this right here was a bearing we just pulled out a minute ago too. So some of them are really good, not bad, not squashed. Uh, of course, this is the bearing that's in the cap. It's got the hole in it. And this is the one that's in the top. So what'll happen if you're getting some detonation or some spark knock, um, right here in the middle of the bearing, it'll get fatter. And so that's how you can tell. That's what engine builders and people talk about all the time when they're checking bearings to see if the bearings have gotten uh, squashed, then that means they need to add some fuel or either take some timing out. So let's put this one in here. We've got these things. Uh, they're just lightly zinged up. Uh, I barely like one ugga dugga uh, with the impact just so everything can rotate over. Um, MGP recommends torquing these in one step to uh, 90 foot pounds. So what we'll do, uh, we've got 50 weight oil on it. We just use the Schaefer's oil. We'll take this thing, uh, turn it over in a second and flip it over and go through and torque them to 90 foot pounds. Guys, I want to show you real quick to just always be careful when you're putting this thing together. You can see the radius down here, the fillet, the radius on the crank, the connecting rod is radius so that it don't grab. The other side is square. You can see how the so rod to rod is always flat to flat. Uh, if you put this on wrong, then the cap or the rod binds against the crankshaft and it locks the motor up. That's why I wonder the things you see me, as soon as I torque it down, I always turn it over. That's how you also check clearance to make sure, well, that's not how you check clearance, but you make sure nothing's in a bind. These should move back and forth, side to side. So that's how you know that you're pretty close. Okay, so I'm gonna put that cap on and we're gonna torque these down. All right, guys, well, there she goes. We've got our assembled short block here. So crank rods, pistons, uh, all the cam plugs are in it. Cam tunnel plugs, oil galley plugs. Uh, we got to get this front roll bearing out. Put the new one of those in it. Uh, and then as soon as we do that, we'll go ahead and assemble the front of the motor. And then we'll get started on the heads, reassembling the heads. I do have a couple things I need to do to those, but I'll show you on that in another video. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget turbogiantracing.com we got some broke parts that are signed if you like that type of merchandise we've also got hats t-shirts and beanies come come see us guys appreciate it